I'm Dr. Christos Apostolou. I'm an upper gastrointestinal pancreatic and liver surgeon working at the Sydney Adventist Hospital. So the, the patient journey with regards to the multidisciplinary team meeting, uh, even though the patient doesn't physically attend, um, really begins from the referral to the, gas, to the gastrointestinal surgeon or gastroenterologist when it deals with uh, patients with our conditions. Uh, we review the patient often the patient undergoes endoscopy, uh, biopsy and uh, other important results. The meeting takes place uh, whereby the presenting doctor, say for example the surgeon, would uh, give a brief patient history, uh, include relevant uh, verbal communication with regards to particular blood tests and then we can showcase um, endoscopic pictures, uh, for example, there's direct access to the endoscopic findings on our system at the Sydney Adventist Hospital, so we can display endoscopic pictures, and also all imaging that has taken place for the patient, including CD scan, MRR, ultrasound, and even an in interventional endoscopy. We then marry those uh, pictures, that information, that imaging, with results that have been taken either endoscopically or intraoperatively, but have been analysed by the pathologists. We can then display the histopathological findings for us all to scrutinize. And once we decide on the type of cancer and the staging, which is important for the treatment, in other words, the spread or lack thereof, um, our radiology, uh, radiation oncology and medical oncology colleagues can advise what is the appropriate therapy. Almost always the patients will review those specialists at some stage during their care but it's important for us as the primary practitioner to be able to communicate that to the patient immediately. So classically, I would um, spend my, my Friday morning calling back patients to give them feedback on what the panel advised would be the best care for their care. And I think patients do appreciate that a lot. Um, the patient does place a huge amount of trust in you as the treating doctor, especially in treating patients with cancer. But I think it's very reassuring for them to know that you're taking it a step further and discussing it with other colleagues with regards to the patient's best care. With regards to the patient's uh, feelings and um, appreciation for this discussion, um, it's really something as I find in my practice which is very welcome and often provides significant reassurance and even relief in the patients that they know that their condition has been scrutinized, analyzed and really taken to the nth degree with regards to what we can and should be doing uh, about them. Um, in some ways, you could say is a, is a second and third opinion all in one. Um, patients often are um, apprehensive about their care, uh, and it's completely natural to question. Uh, you know, and I think it's important for people to question um, things about their own health and to really try and get the best care possible. Um, the reassurance that we can offer them through this discussion, I think, is, is huge um, because they know that we are discussing this with. Um, other colleagues, other specialists, which are also top of the field, uh, with really little bias in their care. So they can really have reassurance that we're giving them the best options possible um, in 2017 or whatever the year may be. Um, it's really something which I find offers great reassurance to patients. Um, it's something that I definitely bring to the table and I, and I try and, and highlight just to reassure them. Um, because the calls can be quite difficult to make and uh, sometimes are some hard decisions, and particularly with dealing with patients with, um, say for example, pancreatic cancer, where the treatment can carry a significant amount of risk. We really want to be as sure as possible that we're giving them the best options available uh, for their care.